Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and now we're going to learn how the index or PHP is structured. And in this, I'm not going to code everything out because, well, time is of the essence, and I don't want to waste time typing every line again and again and again. Uh, because, you know, if you know some kind of, some amount of HTML and PHP, this is very deep, very, you know, simple stuff for you guys. Um, it's just some, uh, some, some, some clever techniques which I used, so don't worry about that. Um, so yeah, body tag. So this is the body tag in which we have, um, I've aligned the body tag to center because I don't want, you know, to mess up with the CSS, you know, to center the file and everything. That is not the point of the tutorial. So align equal to center. And here we have a form and the, the name of the form is a uh, form and, um, I'm passing this submitted information to itself to the same file, which is index.php action is basically you know you pass the the file to itself uh, or you know you pass this, the, the the information in the form to another file but in this case i'm passing the information to itself the information being the email id obviously the method i'm going to do this is post there are two methods post and get if you don't know them just search them online you'll be you, you understand it's very simple post just means you're sending information from one file to another or you can pass it to the same file if you have some processing at the top not very hard to understand but there are some intricate details between post and get so you know you could check them out on submit so on submit is an attribute in which you, before you submit the the form after you click you know register now or you click submit before actually submitting the form it calls um, a validate form function or whatever function you want to call it here and if the return value is true only then will it submit the form and there are other conditions which you know you can do so we'll get to that part soon but let me finish this first so here you have the input text file okay the the, the the you know the, the text a box in which you can input stuff i have you know reshaped it a bit but you will get to that in the css that's not the point of this tutorial the point is that the id is email the type is text obviously it has to be text if it's a text box and the name is email and the placeholder the you know the thing which comes uh, to the prompt basically for the user that he has to type his email id in there that's called the placeholder the attribute type email here and with it then you type whatever you want the br tag is basically for you know pushing to the next line it's character feed kind of a character feed if you talk about consoles then uh, here you have the button now the button is used for submitting its name is submit id is submit underscore button and the type is submit when you have the type submitted the the you know the compiler knows that you know it's a submit button or you know whatever um you know it it knows that's the submit button and it has to submit the form to one of these uh, attributes mentioned above so in this case it's index.php and before submitting you have to go to check if the validate form returns a true because you have to validate the form before you know you submit anything so that's all i wanted to say about this let's go to the javascript and why JavaScript? Because when you press submit, before submitting, you check this validate form. So now you have to go and check the function validate form, which is written in JavaScript. It's very easy, so don't worry about it. So here, um, maybe I'll change the name to something else. Let's say email verification. Email verification. I hope that's right. Yes. So, um, here I've linked the style sheet, but we'll not get to that now. Um, okay, so function validate form is a JavaScript function, a function to validate email, very easy. Um, and here, x will be the value which you return from this. So document.forms, the name, name, okay, these, uh, these are name values, as you see over here, these are name values, form and email, they're name values, okay. So uh, obviously, form and email dot value is is the value of the uh, the value which you put in there. It's the email ID. So X will be the email ID. So get the value of email that the client is trying to submit. Trying because he has not actually submitted it when this function is called. Um, check if the value is null or empty. So I wrote if it is null or empty. It should be very specific. So X can be null or X can be empty. There are two possibilities. And if this is uh, the case, if X is null or empty, X is basically the email of the, the, the text which you submitted, right? So then you alert. If alert is basically the checkbox which pops up, you know, to tell you email must be filled out. And let me see how this works. If it's like this, 
um, if you don't put anything it's like register now email must be filled out that's basically it um, and then um, there's another uh, function if it is not it returns false and everything is you know not nothing actually executes nothing is submitted the form is not submitted if the return value is false and then uh, check if the email format is valid now uh, basically email format is valid means that if you type something like this um, then you need to check email is not valid because you know you can't submit a, an email which is not valid because it's useless you can't send a mail to a, an invalid email id it's not possible so you have to check so here uh, if validated email is not true then email is not valid so validated email is a function which i created using a regex you know a regular expression which validates the email so don't worry about this i'm going to explain it right now so when you call this function over here validated email id uh, and pass in the string which is our email id it's going to go to this function over here and it's going to say okay let me check so returns now this this function returns true if email format is valid else it returns false obviously it returns false if it's not valid so var regex which is our regular expression for checking emails don't worry I'm, I, this this is the explanation for this particular string so let's start this caret and these uh, this this dollar sign over here is basically used to you know uh, limit or you know this is the starting position and this is the ending position so you know, assert position at start of the string assert position at end of the string so that's start and end now this slash w is basically for representing any word character any word character as in if it's a word if it's like lip or Karen or Quinston Pimenta or whatever okay and you can have any number of words it doesn't matter but there they have to be no spaces okay there have to be no spaces as I've said over here this with, with the plus sign okay if it's this dash slash w right it should match any word but if it's plus it's one or many times so no spaces right now we, we, we don't want any spaces to be there so then at basically is at there is nothing to you know it's like literally it's it's a literal string it's it's at and uh, this thing over here validates any um a small letter between a to z and big letters between capital a to capital z so here match a single character present in the list below so this is the list okay matches it not 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 matches it it matches it and plus is basically for the reiteration which means that there has to be at least one character or there can be infinite characters but there can't be zero characters there has to be at least one character plus question mark denotes that there should be at least one character and there can be more than one character but not zero characters there has to be some characters at least one and um an underscore is you know literal underscore there are some email ids which have underscores in them so you know that is valid it's valid the literal character underscore slash dot is basically used as a slash here is used as, as an escape sequence uh, to you know to tell the compiler that dot is not a concatenation scheme it's not used for concatenation but it's an actual part of the tuto uh, of the you know of of the of the regex expression and uh, matches the literal character dot you know dot com dot eu dot in yeah that dot and here you have the same thing a to z and capital a to capital z matches a single character between these lists and uh, here two comma three two comma three basically means that here between two and three times as many as possible giving back as needed greedy why because com is three characters EU is three characters, IN is three characters. Yeah, you get that, right? So it can't be more than three and it can't be less than two. It has to be, you know, between two and three with two and three included. So this basically checks the length of these. This. So if you have a C O M, it is length three and so on and so forth. That's how this entire thing works. Okay. If you didn't understand this, read this out. You'll understand it no problem or you can you know research re regular expressions online and then i'm going to test return regex dot test email so here we have email right the argument the parameter name is email so regex dot test test will uh, return true if it matches and it will be false if it doesn't match and that's how this entire thing works 
Um, yeah, that was a mouthful, actually. That's what she said. Anyway, um, yeah, now next we're going to uh, check out the PHP thing, but uh, that will be in the next tutorial, so I don't want to keep this very long. So thanks for watching, guys. See you later.